Welcome to Bishop Stortford Methodist Church's Sunday service for Sunday the 3rd of May. It's good to have you with us and we are broadcasting this using some worship at home materials produced by the Methodist Church which are sent out every week to those who aren't online so that as much as possible we can continue to be a church together. And this week's resources have been prepared by Pamela Cram. We can't be in church, but we can be church for each other. So it's my prayer that we continue to stay connected, stay together, by phone, by email, whatever way we can, so that God's love is shared amongst us. So let us come to worship. And now for some church news. Sadly, many of you will now be aware that Jean Simpkins died peacefully in her sleep on Friday morning. We believe that she is now held in the light of God's love in heaven, but that leaves such a gap in John's life and the family's life. So we pray for John. We pray for Ruth and Jenny and all the family at this time. We pray that God may comfort and strengthen them. So let's hold a short time of silence to give thanks for the good memories that the church family has of Jean. May the saints rest in peace and rise again in glory. Amen. So let us come to God in worship. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Lord, help me to listen to his voice, offering comfort and safety. We sing or proclaim the words of the hymn number 248 in Singing the Faith. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad.
are taken from the Methodist Prayer Handbook and are from a gentleman called John Hamilton who lived in the 16th century. So let's pray. Glory to God, creator of heaven and earth who has made all things living. Glory to God, father of all mercies, who has given his only begotten son to be our redeemer. Glory to God, fire of holy love, who for our sanctification has poured forth his life-giving spirit. Amen. Our Old Testament reading set for today is Psalm 23, a very well-known psalm. So I'm going to be using two videos from Just Worship. Firstly, a more traditional rendering of the psalm, but then a more modern interpretation. And following that, we'll hear the gospel reading from John chapter 10, verses one to 10. is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Me down, but my best CD on my soul remembers who I am again. 
You call me to the streets, you show me such good things Write things with no hidden strings Just your name on, and it's game on Your great repute like a distant flute It comforts me Through the alley of the shadow of cancer I know that you know the answer And the battle won't rattle me You're around And I found your empathy Your symphony, your sympathy that comforts me You lay at a table, you sit me down My rivals arrive from the greatest to the least But my cup's kept full, my head's held high And you boast about me, your least priest You make them toast me Right through the feast, boy Comfort me. A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 10. Jesus the Good Shepherd. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they didn't understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Thanks be to God. In this reading from John's Gospel, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, or have it to abundance in some versions. And I just wonder at this time, in these situations, how we feel about those words. In Jesus' situation, I suspect his hearers too were wondering what on earth he meant. Because life in its fullness, life in all abundance, under Roman occupation and difficult circumstances when you're scratching a living together, you would think, what on earth is he on about? Not only were the ordinary people having to cope with the Roman occupation, but also with the bad shepherds that in the previous chapter, John refers to the story of the blind man who was healed and the synagogue authorities taking issue with Jesus on this. So, John here is contrasting the bad shepherds of the sheep, of the people, with Jesus as the good shepherd. And Jesus uses a number of images. It's really the closest that John's Gospel gets to parables. I am the gate. No one comes 
to take the sheep apart from via the gate and as in the worship at home resources there are two types of sheepfold being referred to here there would be the one in the village uh, where the sheep would be gathered and where there would be a stout gate and then in the morning the shepherds would call their sheep and the sheep would answer them know their voices don't forget that in Jesus's time uh, the flocks were mainly kept for wool and for milk not for meat so a shepherd would know uh, their lambs their sheep for many years and the other image is that of the gate where the shepherd on the hillside used to lie down in the, in the mouth of the sheepfold to protect the flock. There's lots of different gates. Some gates are very inviting and encourage us to look through them and wonder what's on the other side. Some are practical. Some say keep out. Some are ones that keep animals in. They provide security. They keep the robbers out or the bad people out and what we want to protect in. There's some images here of various gates that I've seen on my walks. Interestingly, when I was roaming around with my phone and taking pictures, I noticed that there are very few gates in the roads where I live. Mostly people have taken their gates down so that they can easily get their cars into onto their drives. But there are some. Some are ornamental. Some are utilitarian. Some haven't been open for good long time. And then there's the ones that provide safety and security. This image is the stair gate at the top of our stairs, which means that when grandchildren come to stay, and I hope they will again soon, that if they wander during the night, they don't fall down the stairs. There's another one that goes at the bottom of the stairs for when youngest grandson arrives so that he doesn't climb the stairs and hurt himself. Well, obviously that's being put to one side at the moment. So Jesus is using these images of comfort, of security. The sheep know my voice. It makes me wonder whether up in the hills with the shepherds lying down in the mouth of the sheepfold, whether on a cold night some of the younger lambs and sheep would almost cuddle into the back of the shepherd for warmth and reassurance and comfort. How we need that comfort at this time. The psalm that we had by video because we get rather too used to Psalm 23. Um, most of us can recite it off by heart. So it's good to be reminded of, of different ways of viewing the psalm. The deepest, darkest valley, or the, when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, or in that rap version, when I crawl through the alley of cancer. You could put in there the alley of AIDS, of loneliness, of depression, of COVID-19. The assurance that God is with us there. Not that it's not going to happen. The psalmist don't say if. It's when God is with us, even in the depths of our despair. 
A line's been going through my head from a hymn. We have a hope that is steadfast and certain, gone through the curtain. We have a God who has been there before us, who is our pain bearer, who is therefore the giver of hope, who has conquered death, a shepherd who has laid down his life for his flock. That is the hope, that is the comfort, that is the trust that we need to have in our Lord Jesus Christ today and every day. My sheep hear my voice, I call to them. If you haven't yet responded to that call, if you've been reluctant to follow, know that God loves you through and through. Know that God longs to give you life in abundance, even in lockdown. Know that God wants you to have that assurance of life in all its fullness here and now and after death. That is our hope, that is our promise, that is what we believe in as a resurrection people. I posted on Facebook a prayer from uh, Reverend Kathy Bird, who's the superintendent of the Stockport district area. And at the end of that lovely questioning prayer, she writes this. Never more so than now do we need the assurance of your unconditional love. That you will accept us. Thank you that no matter how we find ourselves at this time, that you accept us and you love us. You challenge and forgive us and you walk with us through this time of trial. Hold on to those words of assurance. Hold on to the comfort that Jesus can bring with life in all its fullness. Hold on to that trust in a God who will not let us go. A good shepherd who lays down and has laid down his life for his flock. Now a time of prayer. Let us pray for our world in crisis, a crisis that has brought out the best and the worst in humanity. We give thanks for those who are offering help in so many ways to those in need and pray for those who in their fear acted less generously. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind or soul especially for Stan, for Karen's uncle Eric, for Frieda's dad, for David Woods, for David Badcock's daughter Jane. We pray for all who mourn and we name before God others known to us, that God may hold them in the healing light of love. We give thanks for all key workers who have worked tirelessly in medical and care sectors local authority and community teams, production and distribution. And we pray for those now idle, anxious and depressed due to the closures. We give thanks for positive voices, encouraging and nurturing others in so many ways. And we pray for those whose voices bring fake advice and false testimony. Good Shepherd of the sheep, by whom the lost are sought and guided into the fold, feed us and we shall be satisfied, heal us and we shall be made whole, and lead us that we may be with you. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit and God now and for ever. Amen. 
the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The next hymn is The King of Love My Shepherd Is. King of love my shepherd is reminds me that our God is the God of love and we can rest in that assurance that we are beloved children of God. Before we close and you go and put the kettle on I'd like to say thank you to John and Ruth Banks for sharing the gospel reading and the prayers for others, to Mark for his playing and of course to the technical team, Lynn Graceman, Brian Unit and Richard Ling for putting all this together. But most of all, thank you for being here. And so a prayer of blessing. I come into your sheepfold this day to find the rest I need. When the new day comes, I will follow you through green pastures and beside still waters. May your goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Amen.